Hey, what's up? My name is Matt Woods, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about how I landed my dream software job in about 12 months. You see, uh, I'm relatively new to development and all this kind of stuff, and uh, but I've always loved computers. I've always kind of nerded out over technology and was big into video games and always was kind of the go-to tech person with computers and everything, but it wasn't until... Uh, like a couple years ago that I really bared down and got serious about software, got involved in like a coding boot camp and like really started to run with it and learn JavaScript and learn some PHP and different things. Um, and it eventually uh, getting involved in the community, all these crazy things. And so I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about um, basically my journey um, from about a year ago when I went to my first software development conference with Thunderplanes and how the people I met there and the habits I built along the way helped me uh, actually get a full-time job there. We're actually at the ship code to production where I, I work on an awesome marketing team and get to use the best parts of marketing that I love and in development and get to bring those two skills together. And uh, some skills that like whether you're you're more on the technical side or whether you want to work in a software business, uh, just some stuff that anyone can pick up and use. But it's mainly going to focus on kind of the development side of that. Um, and so I remember, uh, man, when I started this journey, Oh, you know, like 12, 18 months ago, I had never really touched JavaScript before. I was always someone who had like poked around with HTML and CSS and kind of stayed in my lane uh, and kind of done some front end stuff. I'd like messed around with like bootstraps and some styling things, uh, like made some quick tweaks on websites, maybe messed around with some WordPress themes, but I never really like dug in and built something from the ground up or built something that I can say like uh, that it was original, that I'd made it. I had an idea in my head and I wrote some code and I made it work. Um, and then I, I think back and compare that to the past uh, few weeks and things I've been working on where I've actually gotten to to pair on real like code that's going to go production with like uh, the co-founder of the startup that I'm working at that has, you know, 28 people in Oklahoma City and New York. Uh, and we have, you know, thousands and thousands of people that use our app. Um, we're tackling real code and I'm getting to actually see work that I do go out into the real world and be seen by more people than I ever thought possible, which totally just blows my mind. And I couldn't know that the things that I was, I'd hope that the things I was learning would be that applicable, but it's a whole different thing to actually see it in action. Um, some other crazy things that have happened recently is just being able to build my network and meet other people in software and be able to like really advance my career by leaps and bounds to the point where like uh, I wanted to get to know other people in this area that I'm looking to grow in this growth professional area where you're kind of combining engineering and marketing and the best parts of both. And so I decided to go on kind of this connection spree and reach out to a bunch of people who knew this better than I did. So I reached out to people from Facebook and Spotify and Airbnb and Pinterest and Google and all like the companies that I could, the best companies I could think of that actually have these growth teams that combined engineering and marketing and I was able to connect with 25 really qualified people in less than 24 hours because of the connections I've been able to make. Um, habitually with some of the stuff I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, and that's been a huge game changer for my career and just uh, even going beyond Oklahoma City with some of the connections I've been able to make. As well as just like getting involved with events and different, uh, being able to share my work out in public. And it, it's open doors to meet founders, CEOs, and excellent engineers and marketers from uh, all kinds of awesome companies uh, in Oklahoma City, but also uh, in Boston and San Francisco and other places. And I've actually gotten to meet some of them face to face. And that's been a total uh, game changing experience. Um, and I've made lots of valuable connections that I, I treasure to this day. And I'm hoping it's just the beginning. Um, so I'm going to talk about how that happened too. Uh, but really, if I had to like narrow it down, uh, the three things that I want to talk about, these three key habits that kind of opened the door to me being able to step into my dream job in software, uh, I'd say that there were these three things. I'm going to go more in depth on each of these. Uh, the first habit is becoming an automatic learning machine. And I'm going to talk about what that means and kind of how you can build that up yourself. The second thing is building a three circle network. And I'll explain what those three circles are and why each of them matter and you have to do them in sequence. And then the last step is sharing your byproducts. Uh, basically, as you're learning this stuff, how you can put it out in the world to not only help other people, but to help yourself uh, get the job and the and the and do the work that you wanna do and live the life you wanna live. Uh, Cause that's why we're doing this stuff. So 
anyways, all I have to say, hi, my name's Matt. Uh, I'm a marketer and developer at Tailwind right now. Uh, you can check me out uh, on Twitter at Mattifer. Tweet me with any questions or follow-up stuff you have after this. Uh, or you can check out my website at mattwoods.io. And we are always hiring at Tailwind, so if you're interested uh, in kickstarting your development uh, career or making a change, always let me know. Uh, happy to chat about that too. But I want to dive into this first habit, this becoming an automatic learning machine. I think more than anything, this is the thing that enabled me to make the jump from what I was doing before, which is like working at a marketing agency and hop into uh, a software startup at Tailwind where I'm actually shipping code and doing these things. And so I was at the marketing agency when I was like starting to kind of jump into this coding journey, but I wasn't really sure where to start. And I think like a lot of people, I, I kind of had this feeling. I was talking to a buddy uh, earlier this week who's just getting started in coding. And one of his number one questions was basically, why am I feeling so apprehensive towards getting involved in new projects and, and getting started in coding? Um, and it's a really good question. And I think it's one that pretty much everyone feels when they're getting started. Uh, and my answer is like, you know, to fight that apprehension that everyone feels, you need to give yourself more wins. You need things that you're going to feel good about that you can like plant a flag in the ground and say, hey, I built this. I did this. I feel good about this. Coding is exciting. It's not easy, but I did it and I want to do more of it. So how do you get those wins? Well, it doesn't just happen. It doesn't just fall in your lap. This stuff is hard. But the way that you get better to get those wins is you have to ship more. And when I say ship, you know, it's not like, you know, Carnival Cruise Lines type of thing. We're talking about um, taking uh, a piece of code, a project, something, and putting it out in the world to where it's, you know, it may not be quote unquote finished and perfect, but it is done and you are getting it out in front of real people, real users, real, uh, getting real feedback in the real world. Um, I saw this tweet the other day by one of my buddies, Ezra, uh, who also started kind of learning to code around the same time that I did. And I thought it was really insightful. What he said was, the biggest challenge I feel as a new or fresh developer is always comparing myself to other developers. And I always get stuck wondering how they got there versus just learning how to work on stuff myself. And it does talk about this discipline of like putting your head down and building code is just something we all have to learn. We all have to get better at um, because it's the only way that you get better. I think one of the mistakes when, when you get started with this habit of learning to code too, is that you wanna you wanna start really big. You wanna make the full app with like the, the billing and the cool feature and this crazy marketing site and it looks slick and it like gives Slack a run for their money. But I think actually the best way to go around this is uh, to start small and consistent. I read this book about how uh, to basically create a habit of learning that really transformed the way I think about this. And I, I still reference it to this day. And it's called The One Thing by Gary Keller. And he, the way he talks about it is like, if you want the best chance to succeed at anything you want, your approach should always be the same. You have to go small. Because if you go too big, uh, you're not going to build up this feedback loop of getting a, you know, doing something hard but rewarding, getting the win, learning from it, doing something a little bigger, getting the win, right? If you if you start too big, you're never going to get that feedback. You're never going to get that win and you're not going to stay with it. And so many people drop off. Uh, and I came close at times. Like it, it can be really discouraging when you're getting started, but sticking it out can make such a big difference. Um, I think really building this coding habit to comes down to uh, these two things, healthy inputs and healthy outputs. Just like you know, any any good system is gonna understand its inputs and outputs, you are a system when you're learning to code and you have to understand what you're putting into your learning environment to succeed and what, what, what you're outputting into the world to make it an ultimate success. And so in terms of input, what are you putting in? Uh, so this can look different for different people, uh, but some examples are like tutorials of like following different classes. These are more accessible than they've ever been online. Uh, you can join classes, which is one of the things I did. You can listen to podcast things like Syntax and Full Stack Radio and different uh, great podcasts by developers that can supplement things in. Uh, in your learning journey. You can go to events. These can be virtual events, these can be real events. I recommend both. Uh, even checking out blog posts. Basically, just anywhere you can get information that will put new ideas, that will show you how to do things, that will reinforce things you already know. You need to be putting the right things in uh, to fuel your learning engine. 
But then uh, one of the most common traps that I have definitely thought myself starting to slip towards at times is you can get in kind of this like um, it's kind of like Groundhog Day, but with tutorials where you're just watching someone else build something and then you're parroting them and just like typing out the same stuff. And then you're not doing anything yourself. You're not actually internalizing any of it. You're just copying a bunch of tutorials. You're reading a bunch of blog posts, but you're not actually you're not actually producing anything. If someone asked you to sit down and code even a simple to-do app, you would freeze or you'd get stuck or you'd have to go find someone else's finished work, which isn't what you want. You want to be able to understand and internalize the fundamentals enough to do great work yourself. And so you need outputs, right? You need to create a forcing function uh, for yourself to ship. And when I say forcing a function, uh, this is something that is like an external pressure or something that that uh, helps motivate you to actually get something done. It can be uh, like a mentor who holds you accountable. It can be a small group. It can be uh, like a deadline that you give yourself to make sure that you actually follow through. Otherwise, when things get hard, you'll just stop, you'll put it aside, you'll think maybe I'll get to this later, I'll learn this, the right way to do something later. Uh, but the reality is you don't always get there and then you're stuck. So we don't want uh, that situation either. So this can look different for, for every person. It will look different for every person. But for me, um, some of the inputs that really helped me, uh, first one was uh, OK Coders. Uh, if, and this is a phenomenal program if you're in the Oklahoma City area. OK Coders is is like a, a a boot camp kind of. So it starts out at like HTML and CSS and goes into JavaScript. And you have some projects that you work towards at the end and you work with a team. Uh, and you're taught by real developers in the community. And so it was great just for me as kind of like, it was actually a little bit of both. I got to uh, learn some of the fundamentals. I got to practice them and I was motivated and excited enough from that input of being in that class a couple times a week to go on home and practice every single night and reinforce that learning habit, which makes a huge difference. I can't tell you how many of my teammates were so excited, um, but they just didn't do the practice at home. And so some of it just didn't stick, which is so frustrating because uh, I know like before the last couple of years, I started and stopped a few times because it just hadn't stuck. Um, so it's super easy to slip into. But if you can get excited enough and then have that forcing function of, hey, we got this big project. Hey, I get out, got to show this this new thing I'm working on at next week's class. It'll force you to ship. It'll force you to get stuff done. And that can be invaluable. Tutorials can be great. I learn really well by like watching videos and then putting it aside and like doing it on my own. And that's my learning style, but it's going to be different for every person. So figure out what works well for you. If it works to like go through and just read the documentation and just freestyle it, great, awesome. Um, if videos work well for you too, cool, do that. Uh, but just f experiment with a few and figure out what works for you uh, as an input. Uh, podcasts can be great. I just enjoy podcasts anyways, and so I'm going to listen to them, and the, uh, they might as well be helping me learn different things, get exposed to new ideas. Um, and so it, it's just one of those things that doesn't really hurt. It's not going to like teach me how to write uh, a good function or, uh, or like organize my code well, but it'll expose me to new ideas and keep me excited and motivated, which in itself is really valuable. And then events. I'm going to talk more about events in a little bit, but super valuable. And there's a lot of stuff that goes along with events that you really can't get anywhere else, in my opinion. And so highly, highly recommend local and, and online events um, and communities if you're able to get involved with that. As far as output, the two things that really made a big difference for me is number one, uh, like mentors. I'll talk a little bit about this in a little bit, but having mentors who are uh, at the next step ahead of you, who have actually done this stuff and can give you feedback, can give you some tough love, can help you ship stuff, is super valuable when you're learning to actually ship this stuff and get it out the door. Uh, as well as like actual work projects. Uh, when I was able to take some of the advanced uh, like CSS stuff I was learning, implement little bits of JavaScript, like uh, even at my last job before I joined Tailwind, uh, getting able to put that to work on projects that the, the company was getting paid for was super valuable. And so um, that the sooner you can get to that and actually work it into your day-to-day -day work, uh, the better. The sooner you can actually create projects that people use or you use yourself, that is a huge win. So whenever possible, I highly recommend aiming for that. All right. Other things uh, that help with shipping. I, I'm focusing a lot on shipping um, 
because this is like really the transformational thing that will separate you from like a, hey, I want to do code. Uh, I want to be a programmer. Uh, but just kind of that wannabe wishful thinking stage to actually doing it, actually achieving it, actually being ready for the job or the opportunity when it comes along. Because reality is like the opportunity can come along, but the right opportunity, um, if you're not ready for it, will like totally crush you or totally disappoint you because you're not ready for it. You haven't put in the hard work of actually of actually doing this stuff. Um, but if you have, it's going to feel so good. Um, and it's actually easier if you keep doing smaller projects all along the way rather than just trying to cram it in or like just force feed yourself documentation or something like that. So some of the stuff that I actually shipped that got me ready um, for the stuff I do today, uh, all kinds of stuff. But um, some of the more original stuff is like I built uh, like a habit tracking app in OK Coders, which was fun. We did like we use like PhoneGap in Cordova. Um, and like basically built this like website that would load on your phone and like you could load it in iOS and Android and that was like super fun and we built this app called like 21 that would help you build a habit over 21 days. It's super exciting. Another one that we did uh, actually for Tailwind before I joined as kind of like an OK Coders project was like this search tool where we took in a bunch of data and we were able to, to organize it by categories and make these different pages um, for like these certain types of like Pinterest pins. And then we could search through it and only return certain pins based on the search query to the user. And we used React for that. And so it was a great way to like uh, cut our teeth on JavaScript and actually build something that was like really useful. Um, and as an example of the kind of thing that we like might actually build someday a tailwind. And so that was really exciting. There were also some things I did that just kind of scratched my own itch. I decided that I wanted to learn to build an API. So I just did it. Um, I met with my mentor. He gave me some, some tips on how to actually do this stuff. And I would build some of it, show him the code. He would show me how to make it better. Show me the next thing to do. Okay, great. You wrote the, you wrote it. Let's write some tests for it. Let's actually add on to it. Let's uh, create something to seed some data into it and work with the file system doing all these things. So I learned a lot on that project. I was also just doing these like quick uh, projects of like creating a blog or redoing my personal website or making like a random quote generator. Um, and so just these quick and easy like front uh, kind of front end stuff um, that were fun, that were interactive, that keep you motivated and uh, are, are not that bad to, to create once you get in the habit of it. Um, some other ways to get ideas for things that you can be shipping. So you can just ship more because really the more you ship, the more you'll come up with ideas, the more you'll understand what to learn. Like this really is like the linchpin habit that helps you, that helps make everything after it easier. It's the 20% you can focus on. They'll make the other 80% that people normally worry about when they're learning to code so much easier. Trust me, I wish I'd done this more when I was getting started. But a few ideas that, that I highly recommend uh, to my friends when they're learning to code. Uh, one is like pair with someone who actually ships. So if you know a developer, if you know someone who actually works on this kind of stuff, who is shipping code regularly uh, and is being used by people or, or who always comes up with great side project ideas, just like get with them and say, hey, can I just watch you code? Or hey, can we work on this small part of this idea I have together? Or hey, can we grab coffee and like walk through this thing? Um, and actually the faster you can get into real code, the better. I think I've learned more from actually pairing over real code uh, with like the developers I work with than, than, any other, than any other thing that I've done. It is insanely productive. Um, if you can, it can be kind of scary because you know you're you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna have to look stuff up in real time, or what if I make a mistake with this person who's no way more than me? I'll feel really dumb. But it's really just something you have to get over because the learning is worth it. Um, it's so worth it. Another thing that you can do that I, I like to try is sort of copying on easy mode. So what I mean by this is uh, there are tons of apps out there that you probably use every day. You know like Slack, like your to-do list, like uh, like yet another email tool um, that you know people use these, you know people need these. Um, and so it's not really a question of like if this is a good idea or not. It's just a question of um, can you build this or not. Like the, the MailChimp or Slack or like these, these super popular apps, everyone knows that they want them or even like Uber. Uh, what if you could take that app and just make a super simple, easy version of that? super simplified down, or maybe you focus on the design and you just break off a small piece. What if you just made like a really simplistic version of MailChimp? What if you just made a, like a clone of Uber's like homepage? What if you just, you know, you can pull some of these ideas and it can make it sort of easy for you to get started because you're just copying someone else's idea and, and putting your own spin on it. 
they're actually whole, tut uh, whole tutorial sites that just focus on sort of this thing of making an easy clone. So it's a really fun way uh, to do this. And it can feel good too, because you feel like, oh, I, I understand why this company did it this way. It's really motivating. Another thing that I really like is this Airbnb 10 to one exercise. So this is um, an exercise that Airbnb's one of their founders kind of goes through when he's thinking of like a new experience or product to create. So he will think of like, okay, if I'm trying to create like a vacation for someone, what is the absolute best vacation they could create? Like on a 10 out of 10 scale, like what is the, or like, I think he actually goes from one to 10. So he'll be like, what's the worst experience? Okay, you go to like your Airbnb and, and nobody's there, right? And you just leave and you're super frustrated and you want your money back. Okay, what's like a good experience? Like a five out of 10. Okay, they go in there, they show you your room. It's fine, it's clean, it's a reasonable price, good location, cool, awesome. What about like a, like a nine or 10 out of 10 though? There's like a parade when you get in. They know your favorite candy. Like everyone welcomes you in. It's like the Beatles like rolling into town. Uh, like you get, uh, exclusive reservation at the finest restaurant, kind of the ultimate experience. You can do this and then like he will take the like the ultimate one with this crazy like over the top uh, like experience and he'll pare it down step by step until he gets to something that's between like terrible or very achievable and like exceptional. And that's like what he builds. Um, you can do the same thing with your app. So if you think like, okay, I'm gonna make, uh, you know, a, um, you know, a recipe app. What is the ultimate recipe app? Okay, it like reads my mind and it like understands like all my dietary habits and what grocery stores are closest to me when it's building my list. And it just, it integrates with Siri. You can think of all these crazy features it could have and then you can strip those away one by one by one and bring it down a level, bring it down a level. And that can somewhere in there, you may find a really unique approach you wouldn't normally think of. Um, that you can still actually build or build a, a copy of that or build a mock of that or build something. And that can be a creative way to get a, a cool idea that you might nor normally think of. Some other places that you can find great uh, coding exercises to ship more stuff are our free code camp. Uh, they have awesome exercises along the way and they also have lots of lessons as I'm sure you guys know if you're checking out this video. But if you don't, like free code camp projects are awesome. That's where I got some ideas like the random quote generator. Um, and there's also, if you, once you get done, you can compare it to other people who have done the same project, which is also super helpful. For JavaScript uh, 30 by West Boss, this is one of my absolute favorite courses that I always recommend to people, and it's totally free. You can go in and he gives you like 30 bite-sized sort of projects that you can actually ship and make things on over about 30 days. And this is insanely cool because it's you don't have to mess around with your development environment or a framework or something crazy. It's all vanilla JavaScript. Uh, there's some really cool like styling already baked in so you feel good about it and it feels like you're getting some quick wins. So highly recommend that course um, as, as like a quick win to get off the ground after you've uh, brushed up on some of the basics of JavaScript. Uh, the next thing uh, is just like if you are excited about learning something cool, if you're excited about learning React or React Native, if you just really want to understand how databases work and how to work with them, uh, come up with an idea that just helps you learn that thing, right? Come up with an idea that works really cool, that works really well with React and you're excited about. Maybe it's totally useless or silly or whatever. Who cares? Like just make it um, and just focus on learning that technology. And that's a great way to build your skill set. And then the last one, one of my favorite ones in the world is like, just get paid to actually make things. Just get paid. Um, I've gotten paid uh, to do like freelance projects, just web design and bake in a little bit of JavaScript or try out some new CSS things or whenever I get to, to put these things to practice uh, at work, um, it's even better because, you know, I'm spending maybe a few days of, of like, you know, my nine to five or squeezing a little time on a weekend. And like, I get recognition for it at work or I can get work resources or I get like a chunk of my day that I get to focus on that. So, and this is especially good if you uh, are like really busy or it's hard for you to carve out time on nights and weekends at home. Um, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you have kids, sometimes you have a crazy schedule. Um, but if you can find a way, like work with your boss, work with the people um, at your company to to get paid to actually learn this stuff and, and make something that's valuable for the company to use uh, or the client to use. Do that every time. The sooner you can get to that, even if it's just, you know, HTML and CSS, even if it's just a little bit of simple JavaScript, um, that's a huge win. 
because uh, you're getting paid, you're growing your skills, and then you can level up and, and start doing more stuff, making your own stuff, getting paid more to do cool stuff for the same company. You never know what opportunities that can unlock. But it's been super powerful for me. And then uh, what to actually learn. So I, I've been focusing more on like on all this, obviously, on how you learn and the habits you build to learn, uh, because I really do believe that's more important than like a specific tech stack. Uh, once you understand the fundamentals, once you learn, understand how to do this stuff, once it's habitual and automatic and you don't even think about it, switching from Ruby to PHP or from JavaScript to, you know, whatever the next great thing is, isn't going to be such a big deal. Um, but that being said, it does kind of help to understand the lay of the land. And so uh, there's this great uh, sort of like web developer roadmap flowchart that's super helpful, at least when I was getting started to understand what's out there, kind of where am I at in my journey on the front end and the back end, and what things can I keep an eye out for or learn about. Um, so that's super helpful. Highly recommend that you check it out. I'm not going to walk you through it now, but definitely an excellent, excellent resource if you haven't checked it out before. All right. The second habit that I think is super crucial um, when you're if, if you're going to get your dream job in software uh, is I recommend building a three circle network. So what I mean by that is normally when people think about networking, they jump straight to like terrible networking event with like platters of food and people are like throwing their business cards at you. And just like it's kind of like, a I don't know, this whole like sleazy used car salesman shtick. Uh, and you just feel like people are talking at each other, but not really connecting. Yuck. Nobody wants that. Um, but what, what I think good networking is, um, is just helping people and being part of a community and giving back. Um, and this starts with uh, what I call like your inner circle. So I think of it in like these three terms, your inner circle, uh, your professional network, and what I call the crowd. And so we're going to start with the inner circle. What is the inner circle? Your inner circle, when you're starting out networking, is like your mentors, your peers, and the people that you are helping immediately. It's like a small core group of people. These are people that you can like learn from and lean on for like these 10x big growth decisions uh, or trajectory that you're on and like these tough decisions that you're making. These are people that can help keep you accountable for your side projects, that can help you get introductions for your first job, that can um, basically you can turn to for honest and helpful and real feedback. Um, got this idea kind of from like a, like a five-star general I think I heard about. Uh, and his habit at all times was to have three people in his life. One who was a step ahead of him in his career for someone who had, who had done the things that he wants to do, who has experience, who was wiser, older, um, had value to pass down to him that he didn't know to ask for. or And he can turn to that person when, when he needs advice, when he needs help. Also, someone you respect that is like at your level, but is like best in class, that is doing good work that can can keep like kind of light a fire under you and keep you moving forward and show you what's possible at your level. And you can get honest and real feedback that maybe isn't doesn't make sense to get from a mentor. Uh, and, and then, of course, like you've if you once you get your the next step that you want to take, once you get that job, that opportunity, you get to ship that project. It's I really think you have an obligation or an opportunity to turn around and help other people who were who were in your shoes a few months ago or a few years ago. And so always being willing to help lend a hand to people and, and pass that on, pay that forward is, I think, so critically important. And, and I think everyone should take the chance to do that. Uh, then there's also your professional network. I think this is what most people think of when they think of networking. Um, I tend to think of this just in terms of like, who can I ask a favor from with a quick message? This is uh, like people uh, from like professional groups, people from Techlahoma probably, or like Free Code Camp would often fall into this, I think. Uh, another really critical thing to to find in this stage is like a super connector. So if you know, there's like, I have this friend uh, when I was in college named Maggie. Uh, and whenever we were working on a group project where we had to go like, uh, we we're working on a project, we had to go like interview professors or go find other students who knew, uh, who had specialties at different things. I just asked her, hey, who do you know? And she just send, send me over like a list of like, all these people to get in touch with like immediately. Oh, I know Brad over here. Oh, I know this professor over here. Oh, I can call in a favor over here. They just know all these people. You want to know people like that in your industry and be building those connections so that when, uh, you know, 
if something horrible happens and you lose your job, like, great, you can reach out to that person. They can connect you to the right people. Or it's like, hey, I, I really need help with this side project. I need help with this volunteer thing I'm doing. Who, I, I don't know who to ask for. Who do you know? You want those people who are super deeply connected, especially if that's not your thing. You want to know those people. It's so helpful. Classmates, family, friends, relatives, former coworkers, you know, the point here is like, you know more people than you think you do. A lot of times you tend to discount, oh, I don't know any people in software. Oh, I don't know any people with the kinds of jobs I want to have. But you have friends, you have family, you have relatives, and they might know people like that. So feel free to like reach out and, and connect with those people and look for those second and third degree connections who can get you in the door, who can connect you with a super connector, who can show you a professional group that you didn't know about. Um, this is super key to positioning yourself to be able to get that job in six, nine, 12, 24 months, whatever that is. And then the crowd. This is like, who can I meaningfully help today. I'm going to talk in a little bit about like sharing your byproducts and sharing what you're learning. But the point is this is like social media, email subscribers, people who visit your website or blog or watch your videos or uh, listen to your podcast, whatever that thing is. But um, I, I believe that once you like have your mentors and, and your peers and that close knit inner circle in place, and once you have a professional network of, of, of people that you can connect with and and be a part of that you should be, uh, be like putting stuff out in the world like in your space so if you're like really into react like awesome uh how can you go help the react community how can you build a following how can you you know whether that's on twitter or that's on youtube videos or whether that's teaching other people how to do something in your framework like find ways that you can help other people um, because that is going to come back around when you need it most especially when it comes to to landing a job uh, and a lot of times it, it's it's hard to see what that'll look like, but I've it's pretty uh, people who build that habit of helping people and building a crowd and building an audience. It, it usually comes back around in a good way to help them out, uh, and it's a huge advantage. Uh, and, and this has just like totally been a key factor in like my journey. Like, there's no way I'd be diving as deeply into marketing or software development if it weren't for like this huge crowd of passionate, talented people who have like introduced me to new tech, uh, gotten me uh, like involved in communities and gotten me excited about it, uh, like introduced new strategies uh, for projects and code and, and doing exciting things, uh, giving me feedback on like blog posts and podcasts and courses and side project ideas and everything. Uh, and like we talked about, like actually keeping me accountable to ship work, whether it's, you know, just like a blog post or a video or like putting together an API or whatever it is, like having people around you at each of those levels, the inner circle, your professional network, the crowd is going to be a huge help um, to actually getting stuff done. Um, and there are like lots of other things that I learned um, in this sort of like networking journey, but uh, I think one of the main ones that, that's helpful for everyone is just that don't get discouraged when people don't get back to you right away with your follow-up. Uh, endless follow-up needs to be your new default. I think so many times when I was reaching out um, about jobs and when I'd meet a, a great connection for someone I wanted to, to learn from, uh, sometimes they, they wouldn't get back to me right away. And it, so it was so easy for me at first to attribute that to like, oh, they don't like me, they don't think I'm any good, or maybe they're, they're just like hostile towards me. But usually it's just busyness. People are so crazy busy, and I know I'm busy so many times. Uh, and, and so sometimes I won't get back to people as quickly as I should. But it's, you know, that person might think I'm, I'm mad at them, but I'm not, I'm not. I'm just like super busy. And if they keep following up, I want to help them. I want to connect with them. I want to get to know them. Um, and so just making endless follow up your new default is so critical um, to making that happen. I got encouraged by this story one time by this, the CEO who once followed up with an investor 48 times in a row without a response. And then on you know, 47 times, he, you know, he'd reach out every few days, every few weeks, whatever. And, and he would leave an email, leave a message and just didn't get back to him. On the 48th time, that investor got back to him and said, oh, sorry, I've just had a lot of fires burning. I've been super busy. Uh, can you meet tomorrow morning? And they met and he invested in his company. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, people who you want to work with or who are doing great stuff um, are just super busy. And so the more you can... Uh, 
do follow up well. Have that endless follow up, that continual follow up. Go the distance with that um, to help them out. Um, a lot of times, as long as you're not doing that in an obnoxious way, as long as you're doing that from a good place, um, and you're doing it and you, like doing the hard work of having something to show, having something to bring to that meeting, um, making that worthwhile for both of you, um, that can actually be a great, great experience for everyone involved. Um, and so like, this is like a general follow up that I scheduled that I've used before, um, for jobs or getting coffee or just like finding mentors or things like that. I've just like reaching out and then making sure that I follow up like after two days, after four days, after a week, after a few weeks and on and on and on to make sure that I don't let that slip through the cracks and that if uh, something doesn't work out, it's not because I was too lazy or forgetful um, to do them the courtesy of like actually following through. All right, last habit. Number three, sharing your byproducts. This is a super key idea, I believe. And the reason why, why does it matter of like sharing your byproducts? And also, what does this mean? Um, let me share what this means first. So if you're following all the stuff I've talked about, you're connecting with people, you're, you're learning, building, first you're becoming a learning machine by creating these quick wins, by creating the right inputs and the right forcing functions to force you to put stuff out in the world. You're going to be learning cool stuff. You'll be like, you know, messing around in JavaScript. You'll be building websites. You'll be creating apps. You'll have these great side project ideas. You'll, you'll learn new things. So you'll be creating stuff. Um, and it's tempting to just just let that out and just let that sit. You know, I ship that thing. Great. Awesome. Move on to the next thing. But what I believe you should do, and I learned this from like uh, this this article from the Basecamp folks who are who make this awesome app um, and they put a lot of great blog posts out into the world. But about like selling your byproducts um, and about like if you are learning these things in real time, if you are you the byproduct of that is like, hey, you have like a cool learning that went along with it. Uh, as you were learning this, as you were navigating it, as you were encountering new problems and, and finding new ways to solve it, other people would benefit from that if they just knew what you knew. If you just documented the things that you learned, the things you worked on, and put it out in the world in a blog post, in a video, in a social media post, anyway, um, even in a lightning talk, in a, in a real person event, speaking, um, that would help someone else. And so often people feel like they need to to be a guru or to have it all together or to have it figured out. So they like put on their creator cap and they feel like they have to be some social media influencer or, or have to have done this for 30 years and know everything inside and out and write the book on it. But that's actually not true. You can help people out by just documenting your honest experience of what you've been learning and just share that in a quick lightning talk, share that in a quick social media post and a tweet and a quick screencast. And that can help people. That is the byproduct of the hard work and the learning that you've already been doing. So why not? So the reason why sharing your byproduct is so impactful is because it helps others, first off, um, which is so fulfilling. And you've been helped by other people's. You get to help them, too. That feels really good. It is worthwhile to do just for that. But beyond that, when you help other people, you end up helping yourself, too. Um, when you when you help people out in your community, they're going to want to help you out too. Um, if you help them learn a new thing, they want to hook you up with a new job. They'll want to help you on your side project. They'll want to help you fix that bug. Uh, send people your way when you're hiring. Whatever that is, you want to always be helping um, and giving back to the community. And then it just creates opportunities by showing your work, putting it out on GitHub. Uh, sharing the process of why you built something a certain way that shows people how you think and people will be attracted to that. People notice that stuff. And then uh, people who some people who might have overlooked you before realize, wow, okay, this person actually knows what they're doing. I really want to work with them. I really want to hear them speak. I really want to, to hop on a side project with them or invite them in. You never know what's going to happen, um, but people can't discover the cool stuff you're doing if you don't tell them about it. It's simple, but it's so easy to overlook. Some practical um, ways that this has looked for me uh, is just like whenever I get a chance to public speak, I always say yes. Uh, it's so it was really like intimidating to jump into it first before I started public speaking. It was my number one fear. Uh, but once I hopped in, once I muscled through it, like it has been so rewarding. And even though it's been scary, um, I've never regretted saying yes to a public speaking opportunity. Um, last year at, at Techlahoma, uh, Thunderplanes, <coughs> at this conference, um, 
I had never done a lightning talk before, which is a lightning talk is like a five minute presentation in front of people, kind of impromptu on just one simple idea that you want to share. So I gave one on like how to market your side project and how to find great ideas. And I gave that talk. And one of the people in the audience was a developer at Tailwind. And so afterwards, like he came up to me and said like, hey man, great talk. Um, and we got to talking about his lightning talk, about React, and he introduced me to his coworker, and we all chatted, uh, and then they just introduced me to the CEO of Tailwind. That went really well. And they got me connected with the director of marketing, and that got the whole interview process started, and I eventually ended up hopping on board their team. So it, it's <laughs> if you actually connect the dots, like me stepping out and giving a lightning talk actually opened the door to me getting like my dream job uh, at a tech startup in Oklahoma City. Um, it's kind of crazy to think about like if I would have like sat down and, and been too timid to do that, that might not have happened or it might not have happened as fast, which is, is crazy. Um, so again, when, when it came up my second year at Thunder Plains, of course I did a lightning talk and I didn't, you never feel as ready as you want to. You don't, you never feel like those butterflies or like that it gets totally easy or not scary, but it's always worth it. And I always recommend doing that. The other thing when it comes to documenting this stuff is just like keep it simple. Pick one primary channel and just stick to it. If you love being on video, just do videos. Um, if you're on Instagram all the time, give it a shot. Just do a quick Instagram post when you're coding and share what you're working on. If you like writing stuff out in blog posts, cool, awesome, that's great. Uh, write a blog post after you finish uh, like learning something or shipping some code. Uh, do you have some friends and you just like talking about the latest and greatest like uh, things in you know Python that you're working on. Cool, awesome. Start a Python podcast and and just document this stuff every week and just have a fun time doing it. If you pick that one thing and you stick to it, it gets way easier to build a crowd because you're talking about what you already know. You have this forcing function of, hey, I'm going to make a blog post every week. I'm going to put a podcast out every week. And it can be so, so helpful. Um, Another thing that I found is really helpful when you're figuring out, well, like, what can I really talk about? I feel like I'm rehashing the same stuff that everyone is talking about. We don't need another, you know, uh, to-do list tutorial in JavaScript. Okay, fine. Like, I get that too. Like, you want stuff that's going to stand out and is something that only you can create. Um, and so... At first, I say just go back to row one, you know, always be shipping. But beyond that, once you get in the habit too, or if you need something a little bit different, I find this trick of like you're finding your superpower really helpful. So this is an idea from like Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert. And his his idea is basically that you can take two skills. So for me, like I started growing my marketing skills like early on. And so I feel really confident in that, uh, like that skills. And then I also started like learning to code and software development and building apps and great. Okay, cool. So if I take the overlap between those two contrasting specialties that I have, those two skills, uh, I have like marketing and development. And so I can combine those and be like a marketing developer and find things. Okay, cool. Marketing APIs. And okay, cool. How can we build a bot that uh, helps people on your homepage and does these cool marketing things? Cool. How can I automate my emails in this cool way? That's like a cool marketing thing. And you can find things that most developers aren't talking about. And most marketers don't know how to do and that can be super valuable so yours will look different than this but you can find uh other things that are in addition to software development and layer them on top and that overlap is what you can talk about that's unique to you and really valuable and showcases uh, what you're passionate about and what you're good at which can be make it a lot easier to get started just documenting this stuff Another great thing about sharing your byproducts is it makes it so much easier to come up with ideas for things to actually make, which goes back to one of the other problems and barriers that you you run into when you're trying to get started creating. Um, and so I found it really helpful if you're putting stuff out in the world it becomes, and you have people that are paying attention on Twitter, on your email list, or at meetups, it gets easier to like tap your community for these insights as you're ongoing. So you can discover pain points, right? If you're like really involved in the JavaScript community and you have JavaScript friends and you're talking to them about this, you can maybe discover a need for like a new package that you could write or a new open source thing you could start. Um, if you have an idea, if you're starting a following uh, for uh, like marketers and you're coding things for them, uh, you can put out a quick tweet and be like, hey, would it be helpful if I coded this kind of things? And you can validate ideas quickly and get feedback from the stuff you're working on, uh, which can be really, really helpful. It can help you validate ideas really quickly. 
And this is something that I've actually done as well. Um, it's just like I, I had an idea for a side app that I wanted to work on to uh, just like brush up on some coding skills. Like, and so I was like, okay, what if I can make an app that'll help people meet up for coffee and like sync their calendars and, and find the free time for both of them. So I just put up a quick thing on LinkedIn because I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. And I got like 41 likes and 18 comments. I got like a list of, I followed up with each and every one of those people one-on-one. -on -one. You can see even some of these people, I don't know these people, they're second degree connections. And so I, I was still able to connect with them grab their emails and follow up with them. And I didn't actually end up getting as far with that app as I wanted yet. Um, but when I have something to show on my next side project, I'm gonna plan on like repeating this process and like reaching out, making a list and, and reaching out to people. And that way I can, I can develop it faster, come up with more ideas, avoid that block and get more of those quick wins and always be shipping. Um, so, and this just came from like documenting the, the stuff I was gonna work on. I didn't, I wasn't even planning to post about this side project that I was working on. I was like, oh, it's small, it's silly, who really cares? But more people cared than I thought. And so giving this a chance, just documenting it uh, and putting it out there in the world uh, was a huge advantage and I'm super glad that I did. So those are really like the three ideas um, in a nutshell that took me from like not really knowing how to code or feeling like a wannabe a lot of ways who'd started and stopped so many times to actually getting my foot in the door, meeting the right people, having the skills built up uh, and and sharing what I was doing to where like I was able to, to join this awesome job at Tailwind. Um, and I love going to work every day. I, I work with some of the best people on the planet and, and I'm so happy that I get to do it. It's exciting, it's fresh, it's fun. And like, I, I'm even more excited for like my side projects because the things I'm learning at work like feed into the things I'm doing outside of work in coding and marketing in in the people that I'm meeting. And so, it, and, and the things, the people I'm meeting outside like feed right back into work and make me more excited. And it's such a cool place to be. And so I'm so glad I started those habits, you know, like 12 to 18 months ago of just like putting my learning on autopilot building those those networks and hopping in the Oklahoma City community, uh, starting to document my work. These things make such a big difference over the long run. And so that's my experience. Um, again, uh, hit me up on LinkedIn, Twitter, email me, whatever. I'm happy to talk more about um, these ideas and what they're like. Another cool thing is like, uh, if you're interested in, in some of these things I've talked about, creating a forcing function, actually shipping code, um, actually coming up with more ideas. Um, I'm planning to start up a group with a couple of my friends, um, Ezra and Ryan, uh, of kind of like this OKC indie hackers group. Uh, where we're actually gonna meet regularly and help uh, each other come up with side project ideas, things to ship, things to learn, give each other real feedback and start putting some of this stuff into practice. So if that sounds interesting to you, you wanna actually ship real stuff, you wanna learn these things, you wanna accelerate uh, the side projects and the and the things that you're working on, uh, go ahead and hit me up uh, on on Twitter, shoot me a message, I'd love to like get you on the list for that and we can, we can get you at the next meetup. Cool. Hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, I hope all you guys get your dream jobs. If there's anything that I can do to like uh, make an introduction uh, or like share from my experience that'll help you get your dream job, always happy to help. Yeah, cool. Thanks guys so much for listening. Appreciate it. Take care.